we were doing grocery stores yesterday and um, we had an incident we had an incident um, and I, I was at a gro a grocery store that I have a history with it was in a neighborhood I grew up in with my grandparents when I lived in the Los Feliz district um, this is a grocery store that um, we shopped in constantly back in the late 70s, early or 80s, early 90s. Um, when I was a really little kid, I was playing on the bars there and I banged my face into one of those metal bars because I thought I was an acrobat at the time. I was really little and it was baby tooth, fortunately, and I blackened it out. So I had a blackened tooth when I was a little kid. But fortunately, it was a baby tooth. It fell out, and now it's not black anymore. Because now I have a giant, like, Bugs Bunny teeth, right? So this is a, a store, an area in um, L.A. that I'm very, very familiar with. When I got back from lunch yesterday, um, I did note over the last couple of times that we've been there, and I have been using the store as a bathroom when I'm canvassing locally, I've noticed that they do have um, a houseless population that comes in to use the restrooms because everybody's pretty much memorized the, coast, the code at this point to get into the bathroom. So I knew that there was some homeless, houseless situations going on. But we've had various interactions, like we had one dude who was thanking us so much for our work that we were doing this. But last night we had um, a situation that was really scary. And um, there was a fella uh, on the darker side by the street it was like under a tree, so it was shading, it was blocking the light from the street lamps. It was a darker portion of the parking lot. And we're walking up and down the parking lot to get the signatures. And I approached him, I think, first. And um, asked him, you know, started my pitch, are you registered to vote in the city of Los Angeles? And he told me that... Um, he doesn't vote for Democrats or Jews. So I went to my close, I had two canvassers in the lot with me. I went to my closest one who I thought was, you know, like I had so much going on. I thought I told one person, but I think I told the other person in hindsight, like looking back on this, I think that I did not actually get to the other person and tell the other canvasser with me. And I said, Stay away from that guy. He's a Nazi. So I think what happened is my other canvasser who did not get that message relayed actually approached him. And my other canvasser was accosted. So he was called a Jewish faggot. And, um, there were additional people in the cars that there was a woman who jumped out, but there was apparently more than just her that were there. And this apparently is, I don't know, like we're trying to like deduce like how this happened and what was going on here because my canvasser who this happened to got super freaked out, rightfully so, because the guy also lifted up his shirt and brandished a weapon. And, um, then my canvasser told me what happened because I was on a different section of the parking lot when it happened. I heard some yelling, but I couldn't, it wasn't discernible. I couldn't hear what was being said. So when I went up and said, what happened, what, what just happened? He explained what happened. And then he pointed to the street lamp that was right by us, this, you know, street light and pointed out a couple of Nazi stickers that had been put on the street light, the, the pole. And I'm not well versed in World War II history. So these were not your swastika stuff. This was other 
imagery that I would not have been able to pick out and figure out. So I pulled my team immediately and we went back to the park and, you know, we got out of that situation. But that is the reality when, you, you know, a lot of people complain about dealing with the public. You're not dealing with the public until you're actually knocking on doors and actually doing stuff in public places like this. This is what it really looks like to deal with the public. It can be kind of hairy, scary. And so that's why we have to have a lot of safety protocols in place because we know that this is, this can be tough work. This can be really tough work, but, um, yeah, I guess he asked me, you know, for, for everything that he went through last night at the end of the night, when I'm like, are you okay? Is it, are, are, you know, how are you feeling? Where's your mind right now? He's like, are you okay? And I'm like, it, it hasn't really hit me yet. Like what, what just happened hasn't really like, I'm still, I guess, operating on adrenaline, right? <laughs> I'm still operating on adrenaline. Um, the reality is, okay, so when I got back, because I also was managing another team, checking in on them, trying to, you know, I'm trying to figure out like why people, certain people were not getting numbers. And so I'm having communications. I actually had a lot of interruptions and I was pretty generous in reporting like how much time I actually walked because I had a lot of issues I had to deal with yesterday. Um, so when I got back to the original plan, which was to spend some time with these two particular canvassers, because I believe in them and I believe that they have greatness and I wanted to make sure that they had all their obstacles cleared. When I got back, I ate my lunch there. I made my confirmation calls and then I started walking the parking lot. I noticed that guy right away. That would have been around five ish maybe 515 we were in the parking lot until 750 the dude never left and we did analyze the situation um you know we we reflected back on our memories of the situation because there is the houseless population there we're like okay well are they houseless are they like living in their cars and we're reflecting back on our memories and we're like no the cars were not cluttered they didn't have a ton of stuff packed into those cars. That's like either a meeting point for them or they came to specifically observe us. One of the two things happened there and they were there for hours and the guy was standing outside of his car watching us the entire time that I got back from lunch. At least I don't know how much longer he would have been there before that, but he was watching us the entire time. There was even police in the parking lot at one point. I went up to the same canvasser at one point and said, uh, why, why is the police here? Are they just getting coffee? Because there's like a co there's coffee bean in the center too. And uh, he said, yeah, I think they're just getting coffee. There's nothing going on. Um, they were there the whole, for hours, watching us. And, um, I, I think that once the parking lot actually started clearing out and the traffic started getting low, that's when they felt, that's when that dude felt like he could make his move to try and intimidate us. You know, um, with the jimmy door and the combo couch and nico house and all your bullshit with your red brown alliance do you really understand what you're playing with do you understand what you're playing with and how that might actually affect people because that's the kind of bullshit that you're getting into that is what you're getting into when you're saying well we can look past them being nazis if they believe in medicare for all but they don't they don't they don't Dude literally told me he does not vote for Democrats. He does not vote for Jews. He does not vote. He has no interest in advancing any sort of municipal process that would help the working class. He literally fucking told me that you are all 
passing us a bunch of bullshit and you're putting us in harm's way.